most children go to school in buildings like this. But for some, class begins at the kitchen table. Ten-year-old Madison has been homeschooled since first grade, and her three younger siblings have never been enrolled in a school. The latest data from the U.S. Department of Education suggests the reels are among more than one million school-aged children being educated at home in the United States, and the number keeps growing. During first grade, she would finish her work very quickly and then not be given anything else to do. And she was doing the bare minimum, and that's all the, the teacher had expected. I did try to get a gifted program started at the school. It was in the newspaper that there was money going into this, the school for a gifted program. So I um, set up a meeting with the principal and I had said, you know, I'm, yeah, I'll do whatever I can to help. The principal looked at me and said, Mrs. Real, all the money we get will be going to ESL. And so I kind of realized then that if I wanted my child to be, you know, achieving her potential rather than just being mainstreamed, then I needed to pull her. What I do like doing is I like being able to teach myself. It's just kind of nice to have time to yourself to learn and just read. Learning independently becomes important when mom teaches two kids and takes care of two more. Madison now does a lot of independent study. And so usually when one is doing an independent thing, the other one is doing something with me, like a grammar. Alex, the four-year-old, he actually spends more time, you know, at the table doing, he has his books and he likes to be involved. And the baby usually sleeps. <laughs> nope, you're doing fine. Next one. For us, we have Monday, Wednesday, Fridays that we, we do other things outside the home or have people come in, that kind of thing. That way, Tuesday, Thursdays, we can make sure that we're staying caught up on our core subjects. The core subjects that the Reels do every day are math, spelling, and grammar. I follow The Well-Trained Mind, which is a book. It's a classical education. She's got a lot of recommendations. She even has it broken down by hours, how many hours you should be spending each day on this subject and this many a week. It's the template that I follow. What does it mean, Payton? I see a star. Right. Okay. Today is Thursday, so it's time for core lessons at home. But like many other homeschoolers, the Reels take their education outside the house, too. For a while, we did history with another family. Um, we've done science, and we do artist and composer, just different subjects like that. I was just reading an article, actually, recently, and it was just commenting on how homeschooling families rarely homeschool in isolation. Sometimes it's just a straight sharing back and forth. Other times, like one parent has a strength in one area, and, and so that parent will teach that subject exclusively, and another one will teach a different one exclusively. But homeschooling styles and curricula are as varied as the people who do it. Ann Zeiss homeschooled her son, who is now 22. She calls herself an unschooler. It means we let the child lead because of what their interests are. Scott wanted to study World War II stuff, so he was studying like booking up books on Guadalcanal at borders, and I, you know, I, I vaguely knew it had something to do with World War II, but I wasn't exactly even sure where it was. So I'd say, honey, that's up to you. My husband really worried that if he didn't do sequential math program, you know, he would never make it in the real world. So we went through math books until we hit quadratic equations, and then I said, who uses quadratic equations anyway? And my husband said, oh, I don't know, I never use them. So I decided that probably we could get by without quadratic equations. Today, research shows most homeschooling families are white, single-income Christians with an average of three or more children. But Zeiss was homeschooling when the practice was less mainstream. Many like her disliked the structured aspect of education and opted for unschooling, the complete opposite, where children decide which direction to take their learning with freedom to explore. There are two basic kinds of, of, of worries or objections that I have. The first is about the nature of developing children into citizens. And the second is about the evidence about how homeschooled children perform on academic skills. Professor Rob Reich of Stanford University says it's the lack of government supervision over potential freestylers that troubles some educators. My concern about homeschooling from a civic perspective is that the children can essentially be cocooned in a system of beliefs and values that accord entirely with the, those of the parents and never be exposed to and engaged with people who believe things that are different. There are going to be other people who disagree with them, who believe other truths, but who from the perspective of citizenship are their equals.
In California, homeschoolers just file with the state as a private school, with the parent as the principal or teacher. But no one requires the student's progress to be tracked. The evidentiary worry is the fact that because homeschooling is so unregulated, public policy makers literally have no idea how it is that homeschooled children are performing academically. So there have in fact been some studies that have been done on this, but they've mainly been done by homeschool advocacy organizations. The best that we can say about the performance of homeschool kids is that we don't really know in general how homeschool kids do. A 1999 study at the University of Maryland showed that homeschoolers as a category often test well above their same aged peers in schools. The kids in homeschooling are doing actually rather well compared to most kids. Gilbert Henschke is a professor of education at the University of Southern California. He says that result can come from a variety of factors. Whether they're simply managed better by their parents or whether they're brighter or more energetic or more ambitious. When there's just a one or two or three of you working together and you can just go into a conversation and actually spend time on it, it's amazing what you can learn. Jojo and Richard Tabaris started homeschooling eight years ago with other families in an independent study program, or ISP. If you're plugged in with an ISP, they have these co-ops where you go you know, once a week, a couple times a week, to a specific location, be it a church or school or whatever it is, and then you have other um, parents or you know, slash teachers in the whole class for a group of 15, 20 students. They issue school IDs and they have intramurals and they have proms. But it's liquid measure. Mm. Pretty soon, the ISP activities became too much for the Tabaris family, especially since Jojo runs her own business of writing textbooks on Christian communication. As a parent, you are a teacher. If you have a child and you're teaching them, even if it's not formal with book work, you're teaching. Ch um, parents teach children everything they know. Math is fun. Really? Why is it fun? Because it has a lot of uh, fun things. The one that I like most about math is uh, Roman numerals. Today is Wednesday, so I do math and unit study. Tomorrow I do uh, Bible and the other stuff. Our faith means quite a lot to us, and we strive to include the Lord in everything that we do because he is the creator of all. And so we teach that to our kids. We also teach them how to share their faith with other people um, and not to be pushy. Homeschooling, you can sort of create the curriculum in a different way to include religious views. Like I have done a extensive study on creation versus evolution, uh, whereas I wouldn't be able to learn creationism at all in public school. Kelsey Tabaras is actually experiencing public school for the first time this year. She's taking a few advanced placement courses each morning at Granite Hills High School in Hesperia. Once Kelsey is dropped off to class, Chris takes his lessons at home. Germination. Yes. Christopher has sensory integration dysfunction. He hasn't been formally diagnosed, but I've read a lot about it. You'd put him down on the grass and his, he'd pick his feet up and scream. He'd hear a noise and he couldn't stand noise. Anything, there was too much sensory input for him to focus on anything. I am very certain that if we had not homeschooled him at least the first few years, he would have been labeled ADD and they would have demanded that we put him on Ritalin or something. I mean, you can't expect a poor teacher with 30 kids in the class to cater to one child, but I can do that with one. He has a very specific learning style, whereas Kelsey's was completely different. You know, So the benefit of homeschooling is you can tailor it to the child, and who better to know than the parents who live with the children. My mom had, did not have to worry about, as my, one of my public school teachers put it, um, catering to the lowest common denominator in the classroom. She could teach me at my level, which um, for me happened to be at a much faster pace than other kids would have been. Kelsey went to a private Christian school until fifth grade, but with a rigorous figure skating schedule, her parents decided to homeschool. Now that she takes a few public school classes, Kelsey says she understands the pros and cons of each system. I can have a individualized, personal, in-depth approach to learning and homeschooling and have sort of the broad knowledge base learning that a classroom environment fosters where everybody contributes his own opinion. 
but the new environment can also be difficult for the student who goes at her own pace most of the time. I mean, there are a lot of kids in my classroom asking stupid questions that don't relate to the topic and wasting time pulling it away from the discussion. Kelsey ranks in the top 20 out of about 500 students in her class at the public high school. She's applying to Harvard, to Yale, to Princeton, uh, Brown, Cornell, uh, Stanford, uh, USC, and uh, um, Vanderbilt. Her essays are, are just phenomenal. Uh, she can, and the interview, I'm sure she's going to do very well. And so I think she, is, uh, she has a very good chance of getting accepted to, to probably even all of these schools. Most of them, as you can see, are for the SAT subject tests, a uh, couple for the APs. I did very well in those. In fact, I know so much about this subject that I wrote a book on it for homeschoolers. <laughs> Material for her ebook on college prep came from the experience of applying to elite colleges. Destined for Harvard, I think it says on the top, and my Harvard shirt. And on my laptop, it has the same Harvard University banner in red. And I think I have Pretty much everything I write, I write um, Harvard in my books and a bunch of quotes from Lily Blonde. <laughs> Kirk Brennan handles applications from homeschooled students at the University of Southern California. Um, rank one of one doesn't tell me much, nor does a glowing letter of recommendation from mom, but sometimes a very critical recommendation from mom can tell me a great deal about a student. Uh, it's particularly challenging for students to get laboratory experience, science, foreign language is difficult to do at home. I dissected a frog in, in high school biology and um, had a Bunsen burner on my table and I don't know if I would want my child doing that in my kitchen. He says homeschoolers just need to provide more information about their coursework and take at least three SAT subject tests. On the whole, academic performance may be strong, but the criticism of homeschooling usually boils down to one thing. What about socialization? Then homeschoolers are shut up in their closets all day long and they go out and, and shrivel at the sunlight and don't know how to interact with people. The old myth about socialization really doesn't hold true because most homeschoolers are involved in more activities than your average uh, public schooler because they have more time. It's funny because school isn't a realistic portrayal of society because as soon as they get out and into the workforce, I mean, they're going to be working beside somebody who's 20 years older than them or 10 years younger, all these different kinds of things. And so they have to learn how to relate to people. And the activities with other children of all ages don't seem to be lacking. Delina's children are involved in musical theater, Girl Scouts, Brownie Troops, a culinary academy, and an art studio. I mean, my kids get offers for playdates more than I can accept. We go to a park group on Mondays as well. One of my favorite games to play is when we all play freeze tag because there's a lot of running around and we talk to each other and so when we're like hiding from the person who's it. But it can also be hard if neighborhood children all attend regular school. They always break whatever I give them. Mm. Yeah, that's why I don't like them anymore. They, they don't come over and ask if I can play with them anymore anyway, actually. It's weird. He's got some friends that uh, play football. We've been trying to get them to come over for a long time. It's just really difficult with schedules. These moms are aware that some homeschooled kids could be called socially awkward. Truthfully, I really think they'd be weird regardless. I, I really do. I've seen so many people, and of course with a husband that's a physicist, <laughs> you know that, I mean, some of these men, some of these people, women, etc., have gone through, I mean, 22 years of school and still have terrible social skills. And so part of it is, is I mean, some people are either born with it or they're not. For the Tabaras and real families, they say they're not missing much from lacking a building with chalkboards. You don't get to go to prom or whatever. Personally, I don't care. I, I could have, I, there's a school dance coming up in a couple weeks. I'm not going because I don't care. Every once in a while, you panic that they're missing something. But I think that I'm able to give them a much broader spectrum of education in a, a less amount of time. Professor Henschke at USC says this attitude towards schooling is catching on in part of a bigger trend. When you think about 
the growth of charters, public schools. Private schools are more or less sort of holding their share, more or less. Homeschooling is growing slightly. And, and then each of these categories themselves are differentiating, which would include probably some more homeschooling. There may not be conclusive studies on the academic or social outcome of homeschooled students, but for now, parents like Jojo Tabares and Delina Real are devoting everything to their children as mothers and as teachers. That's it for this edition of Impact. I'm Kelly Moore. Be sure to check out some of our previous episodes on the web at www.uscimpact.org. Now let's take a look at some of our upcoming stories. It shows you how the whole military thing works. After a while, the more time you spend in Georgia, you see the more involved you get, and the more it makes you want to join the military. It teaches you so many life skills in the context of being able to express yourself artistically, and so I can't say enough for it. And you know, it prepares brains for doing all those other things, like being good at math. When I found out that there's this art studio here, uh, it was it's quite amazing, as you can see from the environment and the, the sophistication of the people here and the diversity of, of people that you encounter. 